How difficult is Splatoon 3 side order? Some people are like, I don't like side order. It's too easy. And some people are like, oh, I can't get myself past floor 20. Oh, I'm struggling. I can't, I can't do this anymore. Oh my God. So with this, I'm going to answer both questions in one. Splatoon 3 side order is a roguelike shooter, meaning you can make your experience as challenging or not as challenging as you choose. So if you're saying if it's too easy or it's too hard, double check the permanent upgrades with Marina once again. Some of you guys might be going in with max lives. Some of you guys might be turning the damage reduction that enemies do to you so you take less damage. Or some of you might be overpowering your weapon just so you can take the enemies out much easier. So if you find it too easy, turn them all off. If you're finding it too hard, turn some of these on. Now for me, I'm actually challenging myself to actually play through this without any hacks. So you see the entire list of hacks that we have here that will make the game easier. I am turning all of these off, including this one that says color chip rate, which for some reason is actually turned on like as a slight bias on by default. They gave us like favorable color chips just so that it'll be easier to actually get through. So this is how I'm choosing to play it. But one other thing that I'm also choosing to do while I'm playing it is having no vending machines at all. Now, the reason for why I'm choosing to avoid vending machines is not necessarily because I want to keep the same special, which, well, technically, depending on the weapon that you use, maybe it might be harder to use. But at the same time, when you go through a level using a vending machine, you basically skip a whole floor. So you could be at floor 28 and then you finish it and then you get to floor 29, you get a vending machine and then you're basically already at the final boss. And I am refusing to do that. So one life, no hacks, no vending machines. How hard will this make Splatoon 3 side order? I decided to use the order duelies because the first time I completed side order, I used the splatter shot and I felt personally for me, the splatter shot was a very easy pick to go for. So to change things up, I decided to use a weapon that's somewhat similar, but a little bit harder when starting. The thing is when you use the splatter shot, it actually comes with a passive ability that increases its speed all around. With the duelies, however, it does not have that. So starting off, you just straight up feel very sluggish and it's a much different experience compared to the splatter shot. So I go ahead and start my first run and I don't expect much of it because it's the first run of the day. And I also felt like even if I do die pretty late into the game, then that's okay because it's just a good warm up. And it was also just a good way to actually scout for some of the abilities that I might like. Considering I haven't even tried out the duelies yet, I just started putting on damage stuff. I found the squid roll ability, which I really, really like just to actually push enemies away a little bit easier. Or when you get into a situation when there's a high volume of enemies, which just is just very helpful just to push them away. I also discovered chips like main weapon piercing, which actually allows you to pierce through your weapons with a dually. You normally see this as a standard thing for charges, which is basically how some collaterals happen when you're using a weapon like that. But it's nice for a weapon like a dually because I can shoot an enemy and anything behind it is also going to be taking extra damage as well. Now this first run was a good attempt. Like I had a good idea of how the dually played within side order. I picked up a bunch of chips that I'm also familiar with like homing bullets, uh, armor drops, which is so, so helpful because whenever I shoot enemies, there is always a chance that they could actually drop armor. So if things get too crazy, I can always take an extra hit and still live. And it was generally just a good starting try. We only got to floor 16 in the end. And like I said, it was just a warm up just to familiarize myself with the type of chips I'm gonna get and how the duallys work best. So when it came to my next run, I knew exactly what I wanted. And one of those things is speed. I really need speed. The thing is, interestingly, in side order, having no speed is miserable. So being able to swim fast if there is a horde of gelatins really close up to you and being able to swim away from them is so, so helpful. The next thing specifically is damaged. I need a lot of damage for these duallys because the duallys does not take out the gelatins so quickly. And to add on to that, it is much weaker than the splatter shot as well. So I made sure when I went through each floor that I scouted out the main damage close ability or the damage distance ability or just the general damage ability. And I believe in this run, we actually get a double damage ability, which made it so that my puny 240 damage every single hit went up to around 300 damage, which is just so much better when it comes to taking out the enemies quicker. 
Now this, for a second attempt, was a very good run. We got a bunch of damage perks. We unfortunately didn't get too many speed perks. But I also learned getting the Killer Whale Pearl Drone ability is just very, very helpful when there's a lot of enemies too. It's almost having like a second player at times, but Pearl came in clutch in many situations. And with this run, we only got up to floor 23, which unfortunately ended because I saw my first Swim Speed ability perk. Swim Speed. Swim Speed. I need swim speed. And even though it said danger, it was hard and it was on 423, it's swim speed. I have to go for it. And the very unfortunate thing about this danger level is that I had no drone abilities and no potential item drops. So getting armor drops, CD drops, anything that I've also picked up, those are not going to apply. To be very honest, I was doing very well until I got to the point where I walked into three gelatin snipers, which then one of them sniped me and then the horde of gelatins basically just went ahead and slammed me. Very unfortunate, but this is actually one of those things that's going to plague me as I continue forward. Run number three, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Get main piercing off the bat. Second floor, ink damage. Yes, this is exactly what we need. Third floor, we get swim speed. Everything is looking good. Everything is looking perfect. Everything is going to go so well within this run. We're starting off with all the right abilities and it's looking like this is going to be the ru- Sure. <laughs> Note to self, don't reach out. <laughs> don't reach out at all. <laughs> yes, note to self, don't read chat because in a challenge like this, you kind of have to remain focused. And of course you can die on floor three at any point of time. Run number four, like I said, we know the abilities that we wanna get and I go ahead straight for it, but there was something very special about this specific run. Honestly, this was probably one of the most important runs that gave me the most amount of information to learn how the duelies work well. Now, once before, there was an ability that I actually skipped over because I wanted another ability instead. This specific ability is such a lifesaver that I feel so silly that I didn't pick it the first time before. And that ability is range. Beforehand in my Splattershot playthrough, I would always prioritize main ink coverage, mainly because the Splattershot also comes with a range buff anyway. So when it came to taking out targets from afar, the Splattershot could already do that. However, we are using the Order Duelies. And to start off, the Order Duelies has very limited range. So when I came across this, I was torn to either pick main ink coverage or main range. And this time around, I picked range, which gave me a 40% range increase. And let me tell you guys, this changed everything. It allowed me to take out enemies that are up higher much easier. When it came to actually fighting snipers, I was actually able to reach the head of the sniper to inflict even more direct critical damage. And when it came to fighting the gelatins that spawn in those really, really annoying homing rocket whatever gelatin things. Having main range took out those specific enemies so much easier. It was just a complete game changer. So from here on out, whenever I see main range as a chip ability, I am going to take it. Now continuing on with this run, I got ink damage, which is also very, very good because it makes your general weapon stronger, it makes pal stronger, and it makes your bombs even stronger too. Even though I'm not really using them since I have curling bomb, and I also feel like it only does so much too. But it's also very good because beforehand, I already got two damage up perks already. I had already obtained close range damage, which increased the damage for when you're standing up to enemies closer range. And I also had poison ink, which I love because when you shoot a general area and your enemies start walking up to it, they start taking up to 300 damage, especially on a level one poison ink level. So the combination of all that just made it so much easier to actually take out my opponents. But what made it even better is when I got to floor 13, when I got main damage distance, and I had the opportunity to pick up two in one level. If I went with this, it would increase my main weapons damage by 30%. And since we got the main weapon range as well, this is basically a perfect pairing because I'm going to be wanting to shoot my targets as far away as possible so I'm not close to them and being able to shoot a bunch of damage from afar is so, so helpful. We continue on and I also now discover another thing, main weapon firing speed. 
The dualies in this game shoot so slowly. I can't tell you guys enough how disgusting it is to use the dualies while shooting this slow. So when I saw main weapon firing speed, increasing it by 17%, I had to pick it. All the combination of stuff that we had before, which is main weapon range, distance damage, close range damage, poison ink, it just makes all of that so much better. It's going to increase my paint rate on the floor. I'm going to be inflicting even more damage, well, much quicker volumes of damage. And lucky for me too, on floor 17, I find another main firing speed. And at this point, it turned my dually into a killing machine. I was inflicting so much quick damage to the gelatins where fighting the tanky ones, the dog looking ones that play with the eight ball it just seemed so seamless and generally i thought this was going to be the run like everything was going so well i was able to shred the gelatin so easily i got to the spinning rotating boss and i've never shredded this specific boss with the dualies so so quickly everything was basically coming together and generally when we got to 420 i just felt so powerful my main weapon was perfect for taking out gelatins very very quickly and confidently and what the Oh, oh my god! I fell off the edge. This was so sad. Like, I can't tell you guys the amount of feeling and emotion that I felt for this run because I felt like that was going to be the run. Everything was aligned. We had swim speed, we have, we had everything. We really did have everything to actually just go through and blitz it through up to floor 30. So this is the type of stuff that makes side order one life, no hacks, no vending machine, much more challenging. Because if a slip up like that does happen, you're starting all over again. In the fifth run, I made it to around floor 24, which unfortunately I get taken out again on this one specific level that actually has generators and spawns a bunch of mobs, which is honestly very, very difficult if you don't have the right perks. On my sixth run, it ended at floor 16, where there were stronger gelatins, which basically, if one of them just touches you once, it breaks your entire shield. So they're very annoying, and funny enough, these ones actually didn't really break the shield, they just pushed me off the edge and took me out that way. On my seventh run, we only made it to floor 15, where the gelatins decided to push me off again. That's so annoying. On my eighth and ninth run, we only made it to floor 10, which both the spinning boss and bull guy decided to take me out. I also got to mention, I did not know bull guy had this attack. I've never seen it before until this point. Okay. What? I've never seen that attack ever before, dude. I've never seen him ever do that ever before. What was that? What was that? Never seen him do that ever before, dude. That's never happened. So you probably noticed we were getting taken out earlier and earlier and earlier as these attempts went on. And I could make all the excuses in the world. I was tired. Well, to be honest, generally, I was tired. This was at 2 a.m., all right? Cut me some slack here. I was getting very tired, so my focus was definitely going off a little bit. So I noticed that, and I vowed that this attempt is going to be my last one for today, because it would be much better if I took this on with a fully focused brain. Floor one, we get one of the best perks in the game, poison ink. Now when I shoot the floor, the enemies are going to be taking 300 damage when they tread within my ink. Floor two, main weapon firing speed. You know how much we love main weapon firing speed, just to be able to inflict more damage quicker and also put more paint on the ground as well. Floor three, main weapon distance damage. Now when I stand further away from my targets, instead of 240 damage, I'm going to be inflicting at least 270 damage. So, so helpful in many different ways. Floor four, main ink coverage. This is so good and it pairs extremely well with poison ink and at the same time so well with main weapon firing because I can shoot so much more and get so much more ink on the floor at the same time. Floor 5, 
main weapon range. Now we can reach enemies from afar and take out all the harder enemies. And along with the distance damage up perk that we also just got, this is such a perfect pairing. From the first five floors, we got the most ideal main weapon abilities, which just synergizes so incredibly well when it comes to actually taking out the gelatin. On floor seven, we pick up another poison ink. Instead of now 300 damage, the enemies will now be taking 400 damage. On floor eight, we get another main distance perk. Now I'm going to be inflicting 312 damage to the gelatins. On floor 9, we get another main ink coverage. Now my dualies paint so incredibly well where I'm not even worried when it comes to ink control anymore. If we head into a splat zones map, it's going to be so easy. We get to floor 11 and pick up two chips of can special drop, which just gives us so many reef siders. Like the amount of reef siders that we get past this point is actually just ridiculous. And it's at this point where we get to floor 12 where everything really comes together. And the perk we get is Hindrance of Damage. Now you might have seen this perk before a few times, but let me tell you the, the type of stuff that we already have during this run. Hindrance of Damage was so good. It is so unbelievably good. And here is why. The thing is with hindrance of damage is that when you shoot in front of an enemy and they get stuck in your ink, when you go ahead and shoot that enemy while they are stuck, they're going to be taking an extra multiplier of damage past that point. So we were already hitting 312 damage with all the distance damage perks that we already had. With hindrance of damage, we were now hitting 400 damage per hit. This was basically almost closing in on double the amount of damage that we were inflicting. And we were taking out enemies so quickly, especially with the double poisoning that we already had, it was looking like a really good run from this point. Past level 12, it didn't even really matter what we got next because we were frying and shredding enemies so, so quickly. Like, of course, we got some nice stuff like armor drops, which I always love. We got canned bomb drops, which was also nice. And funny enough, on floor 17, we got another hindrance of ink damage buff, which means now we're inflicting 448 damage per hit. Which of course, at this point, I mention- Yeah, we are doing damage, man. We are doing damage, damage. Because we really were. This is the most amount of damage I was inflicting in any of the runs that we had before. And it could not be even more perfect when, well, of course, we get to floor 18 and obtain Sticky Ink. Sticky Ink is exactly how it sounds. You shoot ink on the floor, the gelatins get stuck in it, and of course, with everything that we already have, double hindrance of damage, double poison ink, double long range distance, double main weapon coverage as well. With all of this, my strat was just to paint absolutely everything, get the enemy stuck, and inflict huge amount of damage, of course, along with the piercing ink as well, towards my enemies and then shred them so seamlessly. And past level 18, it was just a clinic. We had everything that we would want. We were going past all the floors and taking out gelatins had never seemed so easy. At some point, of course, we got another main weapon firing speed and I think we got another poison ink as well, basically maximizing the amount of damage poison ink does to 600 damage. And we finally made it to the final boss. This was my first chance to finally conclude using the splat dualies. While my focus was a little off, I had the perfect build to be able to succeed in this challenge. So we started facing the boss. I'm very aware of how the final boss worked, especially on my first playthrough. I knew for a fact when Orda used the super chump attack, it's just to stay away at all cost. I am not getting close to that. We deal some really solid damage towards Orda and breeze past the first checkpoint of the final boss. However, this would not be a challenge if things like this didn't happen. As you can see, Small Lusk says, I'm gonna squish you. I've dodged this attack many times before. However, this is the one that gets me. I'm so sad, dude. <laughs>
I get fully squished and I learn what they actually meant by I'm going to squish you. The attack basically launches you up into the air and then the tentacles actually come down as you try to actually get yourself back in. And I probably could have survived this if I pressed A instead of B. I usually press B because when using the splash shot, you can just double jump and it, it makes the paladrome thing work. But of course, I'm using the splash shot dualies. So the first thing that happens is that I roll, which actually makes me descend even more. If I pressed A, I could have got the Pearl Drone out much higher up into the air and actually flown myself more towards the right to actually dodge the incoming attacks after that. But unfortunately, it was just not meant to be and I made that my final run of that night. Now, I will complete this with the Splat Dollies. I will achieve the one life, no hacks, no vendor machines run with the Splat Dollies. And actually, I'm choosing to do this with every single weapon that is available in Splatoon 3 side order. It might be challenging, it might be more frustrating, especially if you die in the later rounds. But one thing's for sure, watching me go through is very entertaining for you guys. So I'd like to give you guys the invitation to go ahead and check out the runs when I do go live. I may have already completed the Splat Dooleys or maybe I'm still doing it right now. But I am not going to give up and this is why for me I feel like Splatoon 3 side order can be very challenging because at the end of the day you make it as difficult as you want to. So I appreciate it guys, thank you so much for watching, make sure to like or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like I said I'd really appreciate it if you do come out to support the runs that I try to do. Thanks again guys and I shall see you guys in a future video.